Ladies and gentlemen, the Food Review UK Unwrapped Podcast presents the Royal Crumble. Stuart, Nate, MJ, and you, the fans, have brought your top competitors for the battle of the best food mascot. Who will sit atop the mascot mountain and achieve the nutrition position? We will decide. Yo, what's up, y'all? It's the 2019 Royal Corumbo! Up first, Captain Crunch and the Jolly Green Giant. One's got a punch that is very reliant. One's earned his stripes and he's ready to go. But he may just be a ho ho ho. Round two, here we sitting with a captain and a bunny. We know our shit, so just throw down your money. But don't be fooled by this rabbit's appearance. Hey, you're gonna lose to a guy named Clarence. Round three, Tango Slapper's got a real opponent. He's six years old and he's wielding donuts. Big boy is all you need. But Tango Slapper's got that super speed. Round four, we got a anthropomorphized sausage stick and a racist. Yeah, no, I'm good. And now we're getting to a couple of favorites. Captain Morgan and MJ hates this. He's got swords and he's a true player. But Kool-Aid Man's got that, oh yeah. I mean, he has more than that because he's like a giant glass pitcher with a jacket. And he's got a lot of fluid in there, so maybe he could like drown the captain. Ah, fuck it, I don't know. And now we're sitting with a couple men. A soft boy and Uncle Ben. We're getting ready for a carbo load. Ben only got in off Gaffer's vote. Up next, Honey Monster and Chip the Wolf. He's got claws and he's gonna sleuth. But Honey Monster's coming for your throat. The fucking scariest thing to come from Quaker Oats. All right, gotta take a step back. It's Tony Tiger and I gotta react. The hamburger looking hold his weight. But Tony Tiger is great. But seriously, guys, let's all have a fun competition. Seriously, Stu, Nate, MJ, all us fans here, let's fuck some shit up when it comes to mascots. I'm fucking pumped. Let's get this shit started. I'm not kidding. Fucking peace out. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, tonight we find out which food loves a fight, which snacks love a scrap, and who loves to throw the first fruit punch. We, your humble fruck unwrapped hosts, have been tasked with a heavy burden, one which we will not shirk from. Tonight we pick 16 of the angriest, the nastiest, and the downright scariest food mascots around against each other to crown our inaugural Royal Crumble winner. Will the jolly green giant tower above his opponents? Will the hamburger steal away with the prize? Or will the colonel turn all his opponents into chicken? The fun is about to begin. I am sugar-free Nate Peterson, and joining me in this momentous occasion are two of the best judges around. First, we have a man who is experienced in, in this area, having been at ringside at the crumble in the jungle, the thriller in vanilla, and the melee in the brulee, it's Stuart the Brain Bullock. <laughs> Hello, sugar-free Nathan Peterson. Yeah. That's good, I like it. So you've got, um, I, you've got yourself a kind of boxing nickname, that's nice. Yeah. After yeah. two two boxers, of course, had the Sugar Ray name, yeah. didn't they? Can you name both of them? Sugar Ray Leonard and Sugar Ray Jackson. Peter. Sugar Ray Robinson. And of course, if he was sugar-free Robinsons, he, that would have been spe- <laughs> that would have been special R. So it wouldn't have quite worked, would it? So, and I'm I'm am I named after Bobby the Brain Heenan? Is that a ref- wrestling reference? It is a wrestling reference. I'm yes, hap- I'm happy with that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hello, Nathan. I thought it was fitting. You love wrestling, and and you are of course the brain of Quivia. I am correct, um, and also uh, a, a, a terrible heel, and um, de- also d- dead. No. <laughs> Carry on. Carry on. And finally, a man who is no stranger to conflict, as he is known to fight Ronald McDonald on a daily basis. Well, I assume that's what Claire means about him punching the clown nightly. It's the lunch break <laughs> kid, Michael James. <laughs> punching the clown. He's getting away, we're getting away with that now, are we? <laughs> <laughs> it's quite remarkable. Yeah, hello, how are you? <laughs> Oh. Great. Great. 
brilliant. I couldn't even get through it. Is that, uh, a, is that a well-known euphemism? Punching the clown. I've never heard I it. I like it, though. I like it. Well, new one on me. What, what, I wonder what it actually means, though. Answers in a on a postcard or in the comments Comment below. below. Yeah. yeah, we've got some suggestions on that one because I'm a little bit lost. <laughs> appreciate the uh, appreciate the thought though the the gesture. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, uh, how are you, Michael? Uh, did you uh, did you enjoy your nickname, the Lunch Break Kid? <laughs> yeah, it's very good. <laughs> Which is, uh, should uh, I do an American accent? Should I do an American accent on this WWE inspired American stylized episode? No, no. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, that's a new. <laughs> Of course, of course, you're therefore playing Sean Michael Jameson. Sean Michaels Jameson. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, my wrestling knowledge is not quite uh, what it is compared to. Me, but I think I've got that. Yeah, uh, I don't know if I told you this, Stuart. About a week or so ago, uh, MJ somehow belatedly started um, almost attacking me for liking wrestling and not telling him about it and and dragged uh, Gossie into the conversation and they were both talking about how I'd betrayed them for years by not making my wrestling uh, knowledge more better known. Why do they? Are they are they wrestling haters no. or are they oh, they quite like wrestling? Do they? Mm, oh. I, I think Nate's being a, a little overzealous with the truth. There, he's he's painting a vivid image with a, a collection of acrylics uh, and quite heavy-handed <laughs> oil paints, uh, when really it's merely a water watercolor uh, on a very small sort of A6 uh, <laughs> canvas. Um, it, it's a lot lighter uh, than than what he's describing. But. Oh. I mean, I obviously knew that Nathan liked wrestling, and it wasn't because he just suddenly slid into my DMs and just went, "I'm not sure, I'm not sure if this is of any interest to you, Stuart, but I really like wrestling." Like it must have come up in conversation. Like, yeah, yeah just like he started talking about it, and it was like I was like, "Hang on, how how into this are you?" And he's like, "Oh, like I love it, like I keep up with it." And I was like, "I've literally never heard." This. You know, we have a spe- fun- we have a special WhatsApp. Lads yeah, who like the graps. The no MJs. It, well, yeah, yeah, it's not called the no MJs anymore. It's called lads who like the graps. Yeah. Oh, right, very it, good. But this is the funny thing. Like, it came up in conversation at the end of the uh, episode with Chris Clements on uh, about crisps, and we were talking post post show about it. And MJ was, you know, bemused to find out that you know Chris and I and yourself talk about wrestling and that I keep up to date with all of it and blah blah blah. And then it took him about ten days, and he just dropped a really weird. Cri- well, not cryptic, but like a bizarre message into the, the group that I have with uh, him and Gossie, just going, Gossie, did you know that Nathan likes wrestling? And it literally just for half the day was conversation about me enjoying wrestling and how much of a terrible friend I am for not letting them know, it, even though neither of them particularly like wrestling. So I don't know why I would have told them. <laughs> um, yeah. Good little session, I think. <laughs> we, had session. we had fun. We had fun. We did. Um, speaking of fun and fighting, uh, yeah, tonight's show is the uh, much uh, anticipated uh, Royal Crumble, where, as I uh, said in the intro, we are going to find out who is the best food mascot fighter. Certainly of these sixteen. Yes, Stuart. It's still, it's still, it's still worth mentioning that we've never actually officially settled on the name Royal Crumble, but there's been so much creative work done around the name and using the name Royal Crumble that we've kind of uh, kind of stuck with it now, aren't we? We can't all of a sudden say, sorry, sorry, War- sorry Warren, for those who weren't aware, the amazing piece of music that you heard oh, at yes, the start was by um, uh, an American man called Warren Minix, who's a great musician. Um, we can't turn around to him and say, actually, would you mind completely redoing that piece of music because we've we've chosen a name that we actually like now rather than we're settling on. Um uh, excuse me. First and foremost, I like the name Royal Crumble. I think it's very good. I think you chose um, it, didn't you? The, well, as I yeah, basically I did choose it, but I also as I said on a previous uh, podcast, we're just re- recycling content now. <laughs> You're forcing me to recycle the content might I add. I don't want to I don't want to say this. Um, I yeah, I made the thing and I said, hey, look, if we need to change the name, I can change the text. It's just a bit, bit, bit of font work. Don't worry about it, guys. And then enough, enough silence for a couple of weeks. So it, it, it became settled. 
All right, fine then. Uh, Warren, we'll, we'll update you with the uh, new title shortly before this goes to air. And if you could just... Uh, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know how he's going to hear this before this goes to air. But um, maybe he could uh, edit in the new name onto the song. I have um, to but say, no. we have promoted the hell out of this. We've got, we've got the intro and rap, uh, which has gone up separately on the YouTube channel. We've, we've put the bracket out. We've put the thumbnails out. We've had the draft episode. Uh, we've both been posting about it on the uh, Frock and Fans Facebook group and the Food Review UK page. We've been promoting the hell out of this. It's a bloody brilliant idea. I am super pumped. I am super excited. It's going to be incredible, and it's very unique, and I look forward to it next year, and we haven't even done it yet. Wow. 2019. Well, Super pumped. What's the difference between being pumped and being super pumped? <laughs> you know super soakers have got that little pump on. Sorry, just do that <laughs> hand gesture again. <laughs> well, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Right, okay. That's how you yeah. pump yourself up, is it? You punch mm. it down. <laughs> You've got to take it to a... It's the same with a super safe. You you got to take it to a certain point, <laughs> and then leave it there. Yeah, yeah. Let's oh. Leave it there. Let's, let's get into the fight, shall we, guys? Um, yeah, tonight's tonight's show is going to be uh, fairly free form. There's not going to be any of our usual segments. This is this is purely about mono a mono a whatever the lady firm uh, version of mono is. Uh. We have sixteen competitors. We've broken them down into brackets. They're uh, those of you that listened to the draft show obviously heard the teams that myself, Michael, Stewart, and the fans put together. And uh, yeah, let's just quickly run through the the battles that we've got at the moment. First up will be uh, the Jolly Green Giant first, uh, versus Captain Crunch. We then have Caramel Bunny versus Captain Bird's Eye. We then have the relatively unknown, I guess for us, our UK listeners, Big Boy versus the Tango Slapper. We have Colonel Sanders versus Pepper Army Animal, Kool Aid Man versus Captain Morgan, Uncle Ben versus Pillsbury Doughboy. I don't know about you guys. I'm looking forward to that one. Cannot That's a big wait. hitter. Yeah, that yeah. is a big it's gonna be, hitter. Yeah, yeah. It's main event, over. really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A bit, bit of a shame it's been wasted in the first round. Uh, we then have Honey Mustard <laughs> versus Chip Chip Wolf, and finally to round out the uh, the last sixteen, it's Tony the Tiger versus Ham Burglar. Whoa. Some absolute slobber knockers in there, um, and I cannot, I cannot wait to get into it. Before we get into it, though, do you have any wild cards? Who's, who's your dark horse? Do you think in this tournament? Um, I, I, I think, I think that we might see. I think we're, we're we're going to have a problem that I think two potential winners are going to go up, going to go up against each other in the second round possibly, and that Ooh. could that could cause problems, and it could mean that someone could end up slipping through. I don't know, maybe an old man, maybe a soft boy, <laughs> <laughs> perhaps, perhaps an anthropomorphised sa- uh, st- sausage stick, or a racist, or a racist, yeah. <laughs> By the way, you've just found my uh, secret Pornhub search, which is uh, maybe an old man, maybe a soft boy. (laughs) 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 Tell you what, though, the second match in round one is a hell of a Tinder match, isn't it? The Cabris Caramel Bunny and Captain Birdseye. A beautiful pair of people there, a beautiful pair of creatures. Uh, Michael, what about you? Any 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 dark horses or anyone you're looking to to, to finding out what they're like in a scrap? Oh, I'm fascinated by uh, Captain Morgan. Uh, as viewers will, or listeners will know, he was my number two choice, and I didn't get him. Uh, something to which I reacted quite negatively. Uh, unfortunately, quite a, quite shameful and embarrassing behaviour from me, really, um, in the draft. Um, Caramel Bunny's got the agility, which I'm looking forward to. And there's just, I think there's a lot of hidden talents there, which we're going to delve into. And it's very really, new. Bio. Oh, I forget. I don't know. I don't know what the, what that is, but it sounds very good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sorry, I cut you off midstream. Well, no, like no, I, I think I was pretty much done. I'm just, is that like the opposite of old vomit? <laughs> <laughs> Almost in a weird in a weird way. I guess you could draw a squiggly line between them. Um, yeah, I agree to all of those comments. Um, I think going into this, there's a, been a lot of talk about Tony, but uh, we'll just see whether the the, the arrogance and the ego <coughs> from that uh, 
favourite position will uh, will carry through or not. Mm. Shall we get into it, boys? Yeah, let's do it. Let's ding, do it. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. The very first... Actually, can we actually get some proper ding, ding, ding sound effects at the beginning of each round? That's going to enhance it. Is that a big job, Stuart? Um, can you just remind us, I can't remember which episode it was where you discussed the amount that creative, <laughs> creative people's time is worth. So this is Jolly Green Giant versus Captain Crunch, I think. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Jolly Green Giant versus Cap'n Cap Crunch, or mm. Captain Crunch, to give him his full title. Who wants to go first what? in this? I mean, this is this is MJ versus Stuart in terms of the teams. Right, I uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say something very surprising here. I know I've put Captain Crunch into into this. I'd like to withdraw my support for my own choice, okay? <laughs> um, and I am telling you now that he's on his own because. I made I made a mistake. I made a very big mistake. I made an assumption about Captain Crunch uh, based on well, based I on a based on a half memory and his name. And um, I'm sorry, but there's no place for him in my team anymore. So he's a free agent. Yeah, he's a free agent because Captain Crunch has no beard. Therefore, <laughs> he cannot represent me. But if you think about it, he's pre-beard. He's pre-beard. He, he's pre-beard. You know, like he's, he, we can see that he's got he's got some follicle growing chops. He's got like. a ve- he's got a very large moustache. He's more than capable of growing a beard. He's chosen not to. He's a scumbag. Yeah. <laughs> well, he looks quite sprightly and young for a sophisticated seaman. <laughs> Which makes you wonder if he's got to the position of sea captain at a young age. What's he been prepared to do to get there? And what is he prepared to do to stay in this contest? I mean, I don't know what you're saying. Are you you're suggesting he'd... Select... Jolly Green Jones. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what the allegations are there. I mean, that, um, that is in itself raises some very interesting questions. You know, is, it, is this like the... Very much like the sweet corn. It's in brine. I don't know. Oh... <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's just a suggestion, I don't know. Right. Can we establish how big is this giant? Well In well. the advertisements I remember, he is literally towering over the crop fields. So Michael, I yeah. tower over crop fields. <laughs> Crops are yeah. not a sp- oh no, actually it's corn, isn't it? Corn is quite high. It does right. grow Corn's about high, the height yeah. of a large man, doesn't it? It, yeah, it probably would, to be honest. Do we reckon he's a kind of 12 foot tall man? Oh, no, I think he's. 12? I th- no, yeah, I think we're oh, talking 100. Much, 120. Much what, that. like yeah. 10 times the size of a, an adult male? Oh, like be- between 100 and 200 feet, I'd say. Oh, I think you're talking nonsense. I, I mean, he's. He's a giant. You don't get to 12 foot and get called a giant. I mean, yes, yeah. by human terms, you might, but. He's a fucking huge boy. How tall do you think Andre was? He got called a giant. I mean, he got called the giant. He got the yeah, he called and, the giant. And he was about seven foot I mean, six. I mean, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this image very well. I can't. Yeah, I've me. got the same image. Oh, can you see it? He's big. Yeah, he's massive. Oh, he is, he is big. big. Like, in theory, almost ridiculously big for this context. Yeah. Contest, like <laughs> yeah. So it comes down to what, yo. Know, Jolly Green Giant is formidable. Maybe the the inner questions of his advanced skill set will come into the next round. I guess the question is, what can Captain Crunch do against him? Uh, I don't see any weaponry. I see a a spunky attitude and a a smile. This isn't really the fight to be smiling about. Isn't really the fight to be taking as... Honestly, to be taking as um, jokingly as he appears to be in the imagery. I, I just don't see what he's doing. When we're talking about facial uh, facial expressions, there's w- one thing that I will say about the Jolly Green Giant. I'm not sure I have seen a more vacant, unintelligent man <laughs> of any size. All of all of his growth has gone into his into his enormous physical size, and I think that what we what we've got here is a kind of a, a peanut brain situation. Look at that face. There's nothing there. There is out, there's nothing there. 
I think that's possible. I, I think it could be mistaken. You could be mistaking arrogance and. Uh, um, well, well, I'll you know I'll I'll obviously defer to you on the subject of arrogance. I oh. yeah, I'm I'm probably leaning more towards Stuart's uh, suggestion that he's vacant. I just want to get a larger image of him because I'm I'm just trying to narrow this down. It could be, he, I'm I'm get, almost getting like he's he's high. Like he looks like he's 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 not only growing corn, he's smoking it, mate. Um, <laughs> Actually, we've not touched upon the fact that Captain Crunch is at, um he's tiny. Yeah, he's not he's not he's not a large full size man, is he? No. Is that actually the is the tallest and the shortest in the whole competition? Surely the Pillsbury uh, uh, surely the Pepperami or the Pillsbury Doughboy is smaller than Captain Crunch. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm final word on it. Jolly Green Giant stomps on him. Game of over. Game oh, of I, yeah. Yeah, I don't I, think there's any any doubt about it. It's um, it, Jolly Green Giants going over here. Yeah, I, I just don't know what Kevin Crunch has got against him, really. Like, li- literally, he's got. I will say this: I do think that Kevin Crunch does have a little bit of magic behind him because somehow he's got his eyebrows on his hat. Jesus. So, so are we led to believe that the captain is just a, a, a an amusing nickname that he's given himself, and actually, he's a wizard. Or maybe he's got a kind of plastic man style powers. Exactly. So there could yes. be, there could be something, but but there's there's too little evidence right now to suggest that what his powers are. I mean, he could literally be the most powerful contestant in this. Could if we but had don't... if we had anecdotal evidence that Captain Crunch was able to um, transform himself into, for example, a mailbox, a kite any of the things that, that Plastic Man is able to do, then I think we'd have a very different situation. Because I can I can I can I can foresee a situation where a mailbox could be successful against the Jolly Green Giant because it could perplex him. Just imagine those yeah. perplexing the skills like you would one one minute there's a man, the next minute there's a mailbox. Jolly Green Giant couldn't get his head round that. Not a chance. And he'd, no. prob- he'd probably just fall over and die from confusion. <laughs> You're um, not convincing me, I'm afraid. Johnny but, Green Giant's got this all day. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah. If, if Cap- Captain Crunch has probably played his cards a bit too close to his chest here, he's not yeah. been. Um, he's not. He's not. He's not let his. He's not shown his hand early enough to get to get the win. Yeah, I, 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 I can't say any more than that. To be honest, it, it's it's there's there's something hidden about this guy, but. Until I know what that is, I, I can't put him through in no. any good faith. No, no. He's got to go, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. He's got to go. So He's got to go. There's our first, um, second round con- com- combatant then. Com- yeah, I don't think that's Jolly much of a surprise to anyone. No. no. Well done, MJ. You've got one through to the second round. Thanks very much. Yeah. That was your number one pick, if I remember correctly. Number one pick, and there's yeah. a good reason. Uh, exactly. Next one we've got then... The the fans' fourth pick, I think this was. <laughs> it was, yeah. Versus my well, number one pick. Oh. Whew. So we have the fans' number four pick, which was Caramel Bunny. Yeah. Versus another captain. Capitan Bird's Eye. Yeah, this time with a beard. Correct. Um, what, what a beard as well. <laughs> right. So, I mean, the one thing I will say about Captain Bird's Eye is... He's had a few forms over the years. Yeah, he's changed quite a lot, which does lead me to think he is a shapeshifter. Yeah, but admittedly, so. he keeps roughly the similar shape each time. He, he did have that nineties kind of where he went young and action hero vibe, didn't he? Though, do you remember that? He, he did. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I think I'm, actually the most. I think even the most recent one I've seen, he's he's some sort of weird hipster captain. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Yeah, I am the new Captain Birds. Uh, yes, I was. I must admit, to it. yeah. What? <laughs> What realistically, right? What has the bunny got? Oh, say it. Oh. Say the obvious. What has the bunny got? Sex appeal. Not yeah. to, not to the captain. Not to the captain. He's more into, he's he, more into fish. He's been at sea for a very long time. He's either learned how to keep his sexual desires in check, or he just doesn't find appeal in the same things that other people do anymore because that time at sea has changed him. And I don't think that the rabbit is going to have any sway over him with her sexuality. 
I will say, though, he has been at sea for a while, but he's been at sea with kids. And you know, Stuart, being around kids means that you need to let out a bit of frustration every now and again. Sometimes, I, I know I'm, I didn't think I'd ever say this sentence, sometimes Captain Birdseye needs an angry fuck. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I think that the Caramel Bunny will capitalise on that. Also, sometimes Captain Birdseye's got to get the fish fingers out. <laughs> oh, Correct. Uh, also, right now I need to see I need to see a full length picture of the caramel bunny because I, <laughs> I assume you do. I assume like most car- uh, comic bunnies, uh, cartoon bunny, she's got big feet, and I suspect that they would come in handy in a little you know kick in the shins scenario. We've got you know we can't no she doesn't she has tiny yeah. feet she has small feet yeah oh, oh that's ruined got, it. it. I think she's got the agility. I think if you look at games like Super Smash Brothers Brawl, the the wily sort of um, animal, thin animal characters, they're always very agile. They'll be spinning around and flicking around. So I'm not sure Captain Birdseye's getting near her with physical strength. Um, maybe you could throw the hat. I don't know. Oh, he is an old man. He's not an old man. He's a man of advancing years and advanced experience. He, I honestly, to, uh, to be honest, I think I think he smells damp. <laughs> no, that... I do. I think he smells damp and weird. He's always hanging around around fish. Uh... Yeah, but I don't know if that's a, that could be a pro if he's fighting. People don't want to go near it. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. I do equate. Um, I do think they're different class people. I think Caramel Bunny is uh, is probably upper class, and Captain Bird's Eye at least working class. <laughs> at least, at least. I, I, I'm, listen. My vote's with Caramel Bunny on this. I, I think you know, literally, she's an animal. Literally, she has sexual wiles on her on her side. I don't, you know, the, the Captain Bird's Eye. Yeah, he's a captain, but. I don't know. I just don't get that. I don't get a, that he's a scrappy captain. I get that he's just a a token captain. He's oh, he's the type of cap. No. He's the type of captain that will marry you at sea. He's not the type of captain <laughs> that will board another ship. <laughs> His captaincy is hard won. God, I'm not feeling that. I'm, I'm my my vote. If we are going to vote, my vote is with Caramel Bunny. I think Michael's going to have to have a deciding vote on this one. I've got to say, I I think. Oh my god, that's bleeding a lot. Jesus. Might need to wipe that. Um sorry guys. Um I'm yeah, I think that sorry, sorry, medical minor medical issue. Um I think that the as I say, the agility, the sex appeal and uh, the enticing nature of the caramel bunny, I think that wins against the ability to coat f- the flesh of dead animals in <laughs> Sometimes egg, sometimes breadcrumbs. I know he's very partial to a batter. Um, uh, and to be honest, the, uh, the the chicken shop strips, buttermilk chicken strips. Oh my god, they're they're absolutely awful. So clearly his um, quality control has has gone down. So maybe it'll be something <laughs> as simple as uh, tripping over his his sea bit sea boots. <laughs> Tripping over his sea boots. I did not foresee that you two were both going to be quite as prepared to admit your your desire to have sex with the cartoon rabbit. Uh, um, oh, and, excuse me, and that being excuse such me, a... that's been festering for oh. thirty years. Oh. oh, easily. And I did not say I want to have sex with her. I would absolutely settle for um, a like a hand job. <laughs> Correct. All right. Well, that's. Uh, I think we're. Uh, yep. She's through. She's through. She's through. She's through to set up a big, big old tie with the jolly green giant. Right. Tie number three. It's going to be an interesting one. We have the big boy versus the tango slapper man. How big is the big boy? Yeah. Again, a question that needs to be answered because I'm not overly. Uh, familiar with no, him. No, I'm, I'm not at all. Is he, uh, I can imagine... Uh, uh, is he basically lard lad? 
I I think for the purpose of this game, we need to assume that he is. Yeah, because they 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 would obviously have to have taken that um, from that, surely. So right. So so right. Pros for big boy. He's very large. He's very very stocky. He's creepy as anything because he's got that kind of ventriloquist dummy vibe going on. Um, but the tango slapper again is supernatural. Yeah, yeah, I mean this 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 played into I can't remember where I placed him. I can't remember if he was my I think he was my second choice. Um now, I'm not entirely sure what his powers are, but he has one of or both of invisibility. Yeah. And hypersonic and speed. Hypersonic speed. Sonic speed. It's yeah. because yeah, because on the adverts they actually they rewind the tape and they show what happened. He's got exactly. he moves. Yeah, extremely fast. He's got gold on his um, on his movement characteristics, hasn't he? He's got hypersonic speed, yeah, um, yeah, which means he can either move incredibly quickly or he can perform multiple attacks. Um, each attack resolving as one damage, but then uh, continuing to attack up to a maximum of three. Yeah. Also, <laughs> also, it is worth noting of the six competitors we've had so far, he's the only one we have any evidence of violence from. Oh, good point. We know that he basically exists for violence. Yeah, for people that are enjoying themselves. So imagine what he would do to somebody who stood in his way. Mm. He's fucking up people for for their pleasure. Now he's got someone in front of him. He's ready to fucking would, scrap with. Is he only going to appear though if Big Boy drinks a tango? Oh, that's interesting. Is he going to need? Is Tango Slapper going to need? some form of valet, some form of confidence trickster who gets into a situation, convinces you to drink the tango, and the next thing you know, you've been tumped up. I've been fucking... He's, he's got an Achilles heel. I didn't even foresee this. I was so... I was My hubris led me so much down the path of just assuming that he could just fight anybody he wants, but you're right. I mean, we only ever see him post-tango. So does he does he exist without a tango? Exactly. Well, without is he without Big Boy drinking a tango? I don't think Big Boy can beat Tango Slapper, but if Tango Slapper's a no show for the fight, my so this is this is a this is a world where these combatants have come to unite and fight, um, and I think that has to suggest that that there's sort of some different rules in play here. I would suggest that on Big Boy's menu, uh, there'd there'd probably be a Coca Cola or a Pepsi, something like that. Uh, would there be an orange soda? I think there absolutely would be an orange soda. There would, would that be Fanta or would it be Tango? It wouldn't be Tango because um, Tango's not got... an American brand. Exactly. But we're playing in different rules, boys. But we can't just lead the rules just to suit our needs. We have to. We have to have some sort of logic here. You got to play the I'm... ball as it lies, Michael. I'm back in the boy. Um, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll tell you something. He's very shiny, he um, is, isn't and he? I don't know if that suggests that, uh, like his statues, he's maybe made of metal. Do you know what? He, he I, I, I feel like I have to, I, I, I have to walk away from my competitor. Not, not quite in the same way that Stuart walked away from his and deserted him. But I do have to admit that. I just feel that you know it's it's like the genie in the lamp. There is no genie if no. someone doesn't rub the lamp. Exactly. So I think um, I think Tango to, to the tango. I think the Tango slap is a no show, and Big Boy goes through on Big Boy goes through on a, a technicality. On a technicality, on, he basically gets a bite at the second round, and I think it's a terrible shame for the tournament because in the right battle, the Tango slapper could could have gone till the end. But yeah. his his power, his supernatural nature, I I believe is his Achilles heel, and for me. Big boy has to go through, but yeah. hasn't a- hasn't actually had a fight yet, and that that I think if he does go through to the second round, could could either be beneficial because he'll be fresh, or alternatively he's not got his eye in, he's not got that taste for fu- yeah. taste momentum. for the fight, he's not got that momentum, and and the right the right opponent could 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 take advantage of that and and almost walk past him into the semis. Right. In which case, let's look at who his potential next opponent is, because I think we're all agree- we're in agreement, right? Yeah. Big boys going through. Yeah, yeah. No show. Yeah, this. it's a shame, but yeah, it is. Oh, so, R.I.P. Tango Slapper. Right. The uh, the uh, big boys morphized sausage stick. 
<laughs> yep, so it's it's racist versus sausage. Yeah. And uh, we have the Colonel Sanders, who, believe it or not, I couldn't remember his surname earlier. I was just, well, it, in the intro, I called him the Colonel because I literally couldn't remember what his surname was and couldn't be bothered to Google it. Um, Colonel Sanders versus Pepper Army, bit of an animal. Mm. This is a tough one. Yeah, very much so. If there's one man alive who knows how to handle meat. <laughs> It's oh. not. It's not Colonel Sanders because he's very dead. But if there's one man who's ever lived who knew how to handle meat and to prepare meat and how to make meat work for him, it is the Colonel. But you say that very much on brand. He knows how to work with white meat. Yeah. He knows how that. is he with dark meat? Uh, well, I can tell you if you've tried the uh, the I Love Bacon Burger <coughs> from KFC, uh, he handles it very fucking poorly. Uh, <laughs> That was a horrendously cooked bit of pork. Barely dead, if anything. So, this is a question of, can the colonel... uh, (laughs) Does he even have the ability to successfully kill um, a piece of meat, which should be a speciality of his by now? I'm not sure he does. And so, I think the question has to become, uh, the, the spirit of the pepper army animal is... Uh, and I guess the energy, it's its its an 11 out of 10. It's probably the highest energy uh, on the list, maybe except for Tango Slapper, but he never even showed up. Um, he's absolutely mad and he's vicious. He is. And I think there's there's something that we've maybe somewhat ignored thus far about the Pepper Army animal. He's nigh on immortal. We've seen yes. countless, countless... Um, examples over the years of him essentially being like cut in half and you know deformed in some way and yet still carrying on as if nothing had changed colonel sanders he's getting on i think at the very least pepper army, pepper army animal could wait him out and the, <laughs> and the colonel would die before before the pepper army animal do you think that the, the uh, right because the colonel that we currently have is not is not the original colonel the colonel that we now have is uh, is played by different people and what have you. Yeah. You think so? Yeah. What you're saying that basically is you think that the branding of the of the Pepper Army will outlive the branding of the Colonel because that is complete and utter nonsense, Nathan Peterson. No, I, ju- I just think we 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 have to go in this in this sense with the traditional Colonel. I mean, we're very much in the same realms as we are we were with Captain Birdseye, and that you know he, he, he changes from time to time, but he's always been you know perceived to be you know. An older gentleman. I mean, the image even used. He's an older gentleman. He's he's consumed a lot of fried chicken in his time. There's heart problems going on there. And if I'm honest, I think just the sheer sight of the pepper army animal might be enough to kill him over. Like imagine, imagine a tiny sausage with eyes, arms, and legs running at you. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm imagining it right now. Yeah, yeah, and then imagine, uh, and then imagine you're a racist, and the, and the sort of... no need, because <laughs> yeah, Pepper Army, the Pepper Army is he does have brown skin, he does, yeah. he does, and I think that and that's that is going to intensify his anger. That's going to light a fire underneath the Colonel that that you have not seen when mm-hmm. we, uh, you see now he can deal with the white meat. <laughs> and that's oh and, and, God. And now Can he's I just say, now he's enraged. I think again something we've forgotten. What's one of the what's one of the key characteristics when you look at the uh when you look at the colonel? What's one of the things that stands out most about him? A clean, pristine white suit. He's not risking getting that dirty. <laughs> he's an old man, he's not he's not tussling with me. <laughs> No, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Cern- yeah. Sanders is down. He's a yeah. mastermind. He's a pointer. He's a he's he's not the pawn. He's the king. Or oh, he's the colonel. Yeah. <laughs> he's not the pawn. He's the king. Well, actually, he's the colonel. <laughs> well, there we go. We've got it. Pepper Army goes through. It'll be facing uh, Big Boy in the next round. So weird, being unbelievable. Yeah. Picks, yeah. 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 It's almost like it's a fix. Um, moving on. Well, moving on, we have 
yet another supernatural character in the Kool Aid Man. Oh yeah, that was versus... that was Macho Man, wasn't it? Yeah, it was close <laughs> enough. Um, uh, no, it's pretty close. I think it's oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, oh, oh Elizabeth. Yeah. <laughs> uh, versus Stuart's final pick, and yet another captain. This time with the tiniest of beards, yeah. Captain Morgan. Oh. Great little beard. I think that Captain Morgan looks very much like uh, a pimp. He does. Yeah. He does. Captain Horgan, if you will. Wee. Uh, this is a tough one for me to call because obviously, I, uh, this is me versus Stuart. I, I picked the Kool Aid Man. I think he was my top pick. Um, if I can just run you why, I, uh, run past you why I picked him. Um, he's a giant jug made of glass that can run through walls. Yeah. There's a there's a strength and there's an invincibility that come with those with that event, mm. and that's why I've got it now. A good fighter, I don't know. I don't know. He wears a shirt, a short sleeve shirt, unbuttoned. That to me says he's more of a lover than he is a fighter. He's a party boy, isn't he? he just, huh? He's a party boy. He's a party every, boy. Every day of the week, he's party, 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 party. That's what he's there for. Exactly. Could, is the Kool Aid? A um, a pertinent part of Kool Aid Man is the Kool Aid inside him necessary, or is he the jug, or is it all one? Because the only way I can I can foresee Kool Aid Man being able to defeat Captain Morgan if he was somehow able to invert himself over Captain Morgan, because if he were to if he, he were to somehow manhandle Captain, he's not going to beat him in any other fight. If he were to somehow manhandle Captain Morgan and put him inside himself, he's not going to be able to drown Morgan in there. I don't think he'd be able to hold him under, and I think Morgan's going to be able to swim. The only way he could do it is if he inverted himself and trapped Morgan within himself. The problem with that is, I think that because he's got a spout, because he's a jug, he's not got a flat top. It's not going to be flush to the ground. Essentially, the Kool-Aid is going to spill quite vigorously. Um, Would it be enough time? Would there be enough time for Morgan to drown? I don't think so. And also, it's going to leave Kool-Aid Man inverted and empty. And as we all know, they're two things that no one wants to be in a fight. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think that if if we do suggest that the only way that Kool Aid Man is going to win is by uh, drowning Captain Morgan. I think we then have to consider Captain Morgan. He's a good drinker. He could drink his way yeah. out of that situation. I, he could drink his way out of it. He could swim his way out of it. There's there's many things that Captain Morgan could do. He's got so I don't much think excess. It's even I don't even think it's getting to that point though. If we look at our list of fighters, Captain Morgan is really the only person on the list who's got range. He's got a ranged attack. He's got a gun. Uh, no he's got a sword. No, he's, he can't use his gun. weapons. Weapons are no, yeah. no, no, not using. No it. weapons. No, he's got a. No, he's now, got to leave now, to the side. That's not to say that you can't use yourself or or something as a weapon per se. So, for example, Kool Aid could drown him because that's part of himself in, intrinsically. Yeah. But you can't bring into the arena something that is no. recognised as a weapon or could very easily be conceived of. So, for example. Captain Morgan <laughs> later on could use part of his clothing to strangle someone. Yeah, I don't could. think that's completely unreasonable because he's not going to walk into an arena with without clothes. But but you can't walk in with a gun. Certainly, I mean, at ringside. You, yeah, don't bring a gun to a food fight. No, <laughs> I don't okay, think he needs well, it though. I mean, regardless of the fact that he's trained with weapons, yeah, I think he's the only man. With legitimate combat experience, yeah. is the all. I mean, we don't. I mean, we'll get onto this in a moment. We don't. I mean, <laughs> un, Uncle Ben's eyes for me suggest a past, but Captain Morgan, I think, is the only, the only, only contestant in this entire thing who could be considered a fighter in his peak. Here's here's how I feel now. I've obviously got a vested interest in this. I personally think that Kool Aid Man is fairly difficult to beat. Yeah. But I don't think he's got enough to win. No. I, I could see him putting up a fight. I could see this being I could see this being the longest fight of this sixteen. Oh god yeah. I because of all the things you said there and just They're if anything be Kool- battered and bruised by the end. Yeah, I just I just see eventually 
eventually maybe even call a man just just leaving just walking through, like he's just decided he sees a wall and he smashes through because he knows that's what he what he needs to do i th- i think i think captain morgan is a dark horse for this tournament i think he's a fighter i think he's i think he's legitimately got tactics on his side i yeah. think he, yeah. he's not just not just brawn brain yeah, yeah. and yeah i i as much as Fair it's enough. putting down my own fighter i've got to put, I, I have to side with Stuart and say Morgan Morgan's a winner. Do you know what else Captain Morgan's got as well? Since uh since the Cadbury's caramel bunny's gone uh Oh no the bunny's still in it. Oh god I'd love to see Captain Morgan versus the Caramel Bunny. God well, that would, God that would be two pretty fighters against each other. <laughs> He's a bloody lovely looking man, isn't he? He's like a young Tom Selleck but with long hair. But I oh. feel like but he's one of those annoying, good-looking guys that he's like he wouldn't mind taking a scar. Yeah. Whereas I feel like Bunny knows that she's good-looking and she would do everything to preserve that. Whereas I, I feel like Morgan's like, yeah, I'm good-looking, but I'd chicks take scars if anything. So exactly. So yeah. I suppose he is attractive, but I do have a bit of a thing for green skin. <laughs> uh, out of interest, Michael, are you are you with us on that Morgan Morgan oh. winner or? I am Team Morgan all the way, to be yeah. perfectly honest. Yeah, Morgs. Yeah. Morgs. Yeah. Morgs is through. Right then. Here it Moving is. On. The tie of the round. Oh, God, here we go. This is going to be bad. The old man versus the soft boy. Oh, uh, this is the fans versus the fans. Rap. <laughs> Uncle Ben versus the Pillsbury Doughboy. Fun fact. For a very short time in the... Uh, late 2000s my uh, nickname was Doughboy so there you go nice what um, I don't know where to go with this boys I don't know if for me it's so incredibly simple Uncle Ben gets the job done there's 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 only it, literally he will pick the door boy up and squeeze him and it is game over there is no feasible way that the Pillsbury door boy has got any anything on Ben Ben has got a lovely smiley face, but look into his eyes. That man's known sadness, right? He's come through stuff. He has come through stuff. And and the way he's come through stuff is by getting the job done and doing what, what needs to be done. We've all seen Shawshank, haven't we? You're now surprised we were when we found out the horrible things that Red had done. Okay? I'm not saying that that Uncle that, that Red was based on Uncle Ben. That's for you to decide. But they've got a lot of letters in common. <laughs> and you... Well, one. You, yeah, yeah. You voice. You voice Uncle Ben in your head. What voice do you hear? That's right. Morgan Freeman. Next round. Oh, right. hang on. Do I? Right. Here's my pros and cons of, uh, on this. Yeah. Uh, I agree. I agree. He does have sadness. But, Stuart, sometimes... Sometimes there's a battle too far. Maybe he has got all through all that, but maybe he's just it's yeah, he's too spent. He's an old man. He's his fighting's done. I'm too tired for this, yeah, maybe. What I will say though on the pro column is looking at his age, looking at the colour of his skin, I suspect he's had some troubles with the racism. I suspect in his younger days he had quite a lot of uh, uh, vicious attacks from some of the some of the, the people in there. In, in the Americas, <laughs> faced with the whitest com- uh, combatant in this tournament, maybe that unlocks something in him. Maybe that unlocks a little bit of rage. Maybe, just maybe, this is his, lo- his last battle, and he's willing to go out blazing. For the pills with Doughboy, what hang on, are you suggesting is... that he's gonna gonna bong as it up before the fight? Or <laughs> is, well, I think that might be racist. I think that's racial profiling, yeah, Nathan. No, no. no, no, no. Okay. No. No. I'm saying I'm shame. saying he might go certainly with this fight he might go hell for leather <laughs> but what also in the Doughboy's favour is look at his face look at his eyes I think That's he's I think, someone on, I think he's someone on MDMA I think yeah, someone yeah. on drugs yeah I think also, he's been spending some time with bongers hasn't he yeah Doughboy magical he can he can surely He's he's a Mr. Fantastic type. You reckon? Yeah. We haven't oh. we haven't seen it, but he can definitely One this is this was gonna be my one and only point for the for the PDB. Uh we spoke <laughs> maybe Captain Crunch has got the elasticity vibes. Mate, we've got a dough uh fighter here. We've got a fighter made of dough. Um oh 
Brilliant. Um, dirty bastard. <laughs> I... <laughs> For me, I listen. I tell you, I see it going down. You see it all the time. You walk into the old folks' home. Um, you see the <laughs> the, yeah. the the. the you, no, I see it. I see it. You see the relative come in. Uh, oh, my bloody granddad or whatever, he's still alive. <laughs> oh, look how much, look how much life he's got in him. Oh, that's it, granddad. Go to sleep. They pick up the pillow. They suffocate. This is what I see happening to Uncle Ben. He's an old boy. Doughboy's climbing on his face, and he's using his el- elasticity to suffocate him. Uh, boil in the bag, if you will. <laughs> I I don't I I think that whilst there are not many fights left in Uncle Ben, I think you're doing him a disservice. He's not ready for mm-hmm. he's not ready for smothering yet, Michael. <laughs> Give it a week. I, I feel like he at some point in this fight is gonna turn around and he's gonna say, I can do this all day. He's gonna Captain America it and he's gonna power through and he's gonna win. And then he's going to and go I'll... back in time and he's going to show Peggy Carter exactly how it's done. <laughs> Behind Steve Rogers' back. <laughs> I mean, Uncle Ben, he's already a Marvel character, so it works. Yeah, um, yeah it, it, it's a tough fight for the wrong reasons. But I, I just think it's his, it's, it's his swan song at the very least. And I think this is, this is Uncle Ben's moment. I think that's a shame. I think Doughboy had it, but it looks like we've got a winner in uh, Ben. Yeah, I think Benny goes through. Yeah. Right. Serial killer versus serial filler. filler. Honey monster versus Chip the Wolf. Right. From Cookie Crunch? Cookie, Cookie, Cookie Crisp. Crisp. Yes. It'll be Crisp, sorry. So I what what I had every intention of doing was uh, just making sure with the few people on here that I wasn't completely familiar with doing some research and then I just thought why on earth should I coming over here coming over here fighting our serial mascots who does he think he is that's everything that's wrong with this country and I for one can't wait for Brexit so that we can stop nonsense like these stupid foreign wolves coming over here attempting to fight our good old fashioned 1970s Grange Hill style food mascots uh, correct uh, well, I mean, you, you say 1970s but I think he dates back even further I think 70s was, was like the, the, the sort of real Heyday. Yeah, heyday, but I think he dates back even earlier than that. I have a funny feeling he was po- post World War Two. Um mm. it was, you know, post rationing and things like that. So, you know, he's he's been there for us. Yeah. Um, he, has. he has. He's a national hero, isn't he, Nathan? And anyone anyone who would say anything against him probably should be hung for hanged for treason, I imagine. Yeah, I mean I'm looking at Chip the Wolf. Don't get me wrong, wolves are pretty dangerous. This one looks almost kind of nervous and apologetic, though, doesn't he? he... Yeah, he's a goofy. Cunt. Yeah, I don't. I'm. I'm not feeling that he can take any. He, he might be able to take Pillsbury, but I don't. <coughs> honey monster, Jesus Christ! The boy's got power. The boy's got endurance. He's got size. He's got everything. He's got his initials on his tracksuit. <laughs> he's got his come own tracksuit. Come on, I mean, come on. How, how how much of a scrapper do you need to be? Yeah, I'm fu- I'm furious about this. Listen, I'll say I say one thing and I say one thing only. Look at their cereal, <sighs> Honey Monster Puffs is what they're called. By the way, is the that what they're called now? Sure. That's what they're called. They're called Honey Monster Puffs. That's appalling. Um, it's an awful name. It's an awful name, and not only that, it's an even worse cereal. Uh, Honey Monster Puffs. I'm not. I'm not fucking calling them that. Sugar Puffs are a dreadful cereal. They're a deadful cereal. They are detestably rancid and gross. They are a horrible flavour. They're a skanky texture. Uh, you find me a cereal that disintegrates quicker than Honey Monster Puffs, or Sugar Puffs, uh, and I'll find you a liar. Um, they're, a, they're a rancid cereal, whereas conversely, Cookie Crisp, by all means, is a wonderful cereal. If you were to get the Nestle multi pack, uh, you'd be damn sure that the Cookie Crisp mm. will be the first oh, to go. Nathan, go uh, Yeah, no, I was just going to say, I mean, that's that's all very valid points if we were playing which cereal was yeah. better. 
Can I ask you a couple of questions, Michael? Yes, please do. But I'd also like to counter. Okay, what, what would you rather, What would you rather have a KFC variety meal or a pepperoni? Speaking as a non speaking as a non drinker, Michael, what would you rather What would you rather have a nice nice glass of Kool Aid or a bit or a big swig of Captain Morgan's rum? I understand where you're going with this. Well, because because, it, like to... because because what I'm doing is making your point absolutely invalid. That's okay, yeah, well, you I'll, you I'll understand re- that that's what I'm doing. Do you? I'll revalidate it then. Will you? Uh, By saying the same thing again or... Honey Monster is going into this battle knowing his serial is shit and thus knowing his existence is dreadful. Uh, Chip is coming into this uh, fight with confidence. He knows he's actually got something worth fighting for. He's wily. He's fast. He's agile. He's got claws. Honey Monster's just a fucking cuddly toy. Wolf's going (laughs) to bite him, eat him, rinse him. And he's determined. We see that in the advertisements. Uh, Chip, Chip the Wolf has got this all day long. Can I just say, Chip the Wolf is the Ned Flanders of this uh, fight. (laughs) He looks, he couldn't look more like he was like just hanging around like a children's (laughs) camp or something like that. And just, he's just, nah, he's got, he's got nothing. He's got, he's got nothing. He might be, yeah, he might be the worst competitor in this, in this six. Fuck off. And that that includes, and that includes an orange fellow that didn't even turn up. So. Nah, He's a wolf. Chip, Chip can, Chip can, fuck off. Yeah, he can, big time. I mean, we've seen it all in the adverts, haven't we? No, we haven't because it, he's American, and I'm not. Oh, sorry. Do we have adverts Lit- for Cookie Crisp on TV in this country? Do we? Are, are literally all of your other mascots fucking non-English slash American. Um, mm, not sure about that. But at this point, it matters. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm I'm not having it. He's yeah. just a he's a loser. Yeah. He's he's that guy who thinks he's cool and he's down. He's the guy that that says cool and wicked. He still says wicked. <laughs> he says rad. Oh, he says rad totally. He's he's got the raddest Sierra out there. Oh no, he's, as he's... as him and Honey Monster of uh, standing in gorilla position waiting to go down to the ring. He's turned around to Honey Monster and he said, "Hey, bro, we're gonna have such a rad fight tonight." Yeah, and, and, good and, luck. And, and Honey Monster has just butted him before they've even gone to the <laughs> ring. And Chip... he's, he's actually turned around and said, may the best man win, and meant it as well. <laughs> what an absolute melt. I bet he can't. By the way, I, I bet Chip the Wolf can't take tablets either. Bird's Eye is indeed American, you hypocritical fucking cunt. <laughs> right, so I think that's a unanimous one there. That uh, Honey Monster goes through. And finally, Boss. finally, the man, well, the tiger that basically gave us the idea for this uh, contest, Tony the Tiger, yeah. versus the Hamburglar. I think you need to sell the Hamburglar here, Nathan, because this is this is the <laughs> absolute um, definition of fighting from underneath here for me. Yeah, it's, yeah. This is yeah. this is Jocelyn. Uh, you've got to win us over here. This is Brock Lesnar versus Michael Jameson. Yeah, yeah. I've I've got two things here. He's a plucky loser, and everyone loves that. And maybe that'll just get him through the fight. And Tony will take some sort Sorry, of pity on him. Plucky what? Huh? Plucky. He's a plucky loser. Oh right, okay. Tony wins then. Uh, <laughs> but also, let's not forget the man's been in prison. He's learned. <laughs> he's learned a few tricks. Oh, but he has. He survived. Has, has he Tony survived not been in prison as well? They've both got prison. black stripes. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Uh, which reminds me, do you do you remember that that fan fiction uh, Tony the Tiger videos that came out a few years ago, where it was it was basically like people on drugs and like Tony the Tiger. Yeah, there. yeah. It was it was official. <coughs> was it? it wasn't official. Fuck off. Like he was no. dealing, with, he was dealing like with abortions and stuff like that. There's no way that fucking Kellogg's are signing off on that, surely. Yeah. Why do I think it's official? That's really stupid. I'll find the videos. Um, I will say yeah. one thing: they are both absolutely fabulizing with some red accessories. Hamburglar with his very <laughs> fat gloves, and uh, Tony with what can only be described as a named handkerchief around his neck. Um, yeah, I, I'll be honest. I don't have confidence in my boy. I picked him solely for the fact that he was a prison boy, that he would have learnt a few tricks of the trade. He would have learnt how to shank. Um, he, he might have 
found a few things. Now, he can't walk in there with a weapon, but I don't know if there's any rules of, of you know, crafting something when he's in the arena. I'd be honest, I think the only thing he learned in prison is to grin and bear it. <laughs> <laughs> very, very so grimace and bear it. Oh, that one, um, that one tooth that the Hamburglar's got couldn't be more inconveniently placed for prison life. <laughs> Um, oh fuck, boy! Yeah, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think I have enough. I mean, Tony, Tony's a, yeah. an absolute alpha mensch, isn't he? I mean, yeah. there's, ugh, I, I, even I can't, even I can't deny that Tony's in for a, a fairly decent tournament, and, and, and I don't think Hamburger's got much to, to offer up against him, to be honest. Um, Jesus Christ, that's a second round match that I cannot wait for. Yeah, I think oh, yeah. it was always on the cards, but yeah. that is a belter. Right. Right then. Ding, so. ding, ding. You're listening to Fruck Unwrapped, the Food Review UK podcast. This is MJ, and if you donate to us on Patreon, I will stop I, doing I, this I, stupid I, voice. Ding, ding. Quarter, quarter Fs, the QFs. Round two, fight! Just around... Just to round through what we've got then. Oh, we've man. Billy Green Giant versus Caramel Bunny. Yeah. Uh, Big Boy versus yep. Pepper Army Animal. Yeah. We have Captain Morgan versus Uncle Ben. Yeah. And uh, Honey Monster versus Tony the Tiger. Yeah. What may- maybe should have been the final, but, you know, we'll see, won't we? The cards lie, the cards mm. will fly. Right. Oh, let's the get Honey Monster ain't that good, mate. Oh, grow up. Let's let's wait and see what happens, mate. I feel I feel like he's going to be naturally against the Honey Monster the whole way now. Unfortunately, mm. right? Jolly Green Giant versus Caramel Bunny. We've already laid out some of the reasons we think these competitors were good against their pre- previous opponents. But how do we see this one go? So Jolly Jolly Green Giant to me, he didn't get to use the extent of his ability in the first round. He, it 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 was a one sided match. I do think this is more formidable. Uh, I think the yeah. suggestion that is that he is a vacant and unintelligent man plays into the hands of the Cadbury Caramel Bunny, Definitely. who is a voluptuous... Uh, she's a woman, so she's obviously very manipulative. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in fact, she's the, the only uh, female uh, opponent um, on the board today. That's Some would say token oh. female representation. Well, I'd, I'd have to look at the food industry and uh, not our selection process. Uh, there's no sexism in our selection process. Um, merely the options that we had. Uh, and indeed, maybe there will be more women in next year's competition. Maybe we should make it important to do so. Um, it is Pride Month as well. Where are the gay mascots? Hashtag bring out your gays. Uncle, oh, um, I mean, Uncle Ben. Captain Crunch. Captain Crunch, very much so. Uncle Ben. Oh, do you think they're gay? I'm not suggesting together, but I think <laughs> chip the wolf, probably. Yeah. Um, but what does what can Green, Jolly Green Giant bring to this? Uh, strength, power, yeah, size, so much. Where where is this? Where, where's the fight going to take place? Does the Cabris Caramel Bunny have an opportunity to um, to construct a labyrinth of burrows underneath the battlefield? In which case. I think I think she could very easily trap the Jolly Green Giant by by basically undermining um figura- figuratively and literally undermining the Jolly Green Giant um and creating a system where perhaps she could trap him. She could make one of his legs she could she could destabilise him so one of his legs becomes um inextricably trapped in the ground and and there's nothing he can do and she can take her time then she could she could um she could just nibble on his jugular vein and you know <laughs> who knows what she's she's a nibbler uh, she is a nibbler I, I i agree that i think she'll nibble but i have to say uh i actually think it's inevitable that mm. this fight is is going to be a it's going to be a fight of love because i, I honestly think these guys are absolutely going to have sex in the ring. Jesus um, Christ. I, no, no, I'm sorry. I, I think it's <laughs> going to be... Which I think ring? It's gonna be, I think we need to shift the, the voting to see not 
not who's the stronger fighter, who's the stronger lover. Um, you've got a very tall, very large, very muscular man. He's wearing very little clothing, and if you can even call it clothing, the really some some uh, modestly placed foliage. Um, uh, <laughs> um, and obviously a very, very socially appealing. And, uh, he is. And it, you can see his, his form. It's very nice. And he's against a very... Well, Sub, um, objectively a very attractive female bunny um, I think I am certain they're going to have sex so it comes, comes down to the most satisfying partner that's that's the argument that I'll well, be making if, if, if I'll they, be happy to go for, run through the deep if there was themselves. to be a sexual encounter between the two of them I think that that's game over because yeah Essentially, what we're talking about here is not a loving act. We're talking about a giant green man bludgeoning a rabbit to death with his penis. <laughs> and that's not the first time we've talked about that. Um, yeah, I I think it I goes think that way. Take, I, I think she could take it for a little bit. But... <laughs> Just a tip. I can, when he gets overexcited, he gives 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 a few of his classic thrusts. I think she might be in a bit of trouble. <laughs> See, I, I see him with the with the including the um, the vacant expression. Him just sort of like like carrying on, almost like just without <laughs> realizing she's she's dead. Like just <laughs> oh, oh yeah, just, you know. don't yeah, don't get me wrong. I don't think that is a face that suggests he'd ever ejaculate. I think it'd just be a perpetually increasing throbbing. In fact, I think our biggest problem, if it does go down that route, is getting him to stop before <laughs> he gets to the semi-final. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, the last thing is him in the semis. Uh, <laughs> or a semi in her. Oh. Um, I just, I'm sorry. They're both so sexually appealing. I don't see it not ending in that. Yeah. I, I, like, I like Stuart's idea. I like the tactics, but I just... I don't know what she's got in the locker. Okay, she traps him, but I just... I, even she's, it... she's a nibbler, but let's be honest, it's not going to be fighting nibbling. It's going to be sexual nibbling. And, yeah, I just... I don't think she's got enough, even with her wiles. I think she could have taken down some of the others. I think, you know, but I think I think the Jean the Giant, the Jolly Green Giant, is just going to have too yeah. much... Yeah. Um, I think that the the tale that Michael the 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 picture that's Michael Michael has painted seems seems almost inevitable, and in that yep. situation, it's um, I think death. it's yeah. I think I think we I think we almost certain death. Um, death yeah. I, I can almost I can almost imagine I can almost picture like her face, and Do- it just being that moment of that moment of. Um, you know, be careful what you wish for. Don't that do sort of realization yeah. that she's taken. She's bitten off more than she can chew. Don't think yeah, about that. Don't think them, about that face. Taking one too big of a bite out of the carrot. That's, that, that's going to be the last thing you think about tonight, and you're going to struggle to sleep. Yeah, it's too haunting. Yeah, and she's gone. I wish we hadn't done this now. <laughs> We've killed Caramel. Yeah, it, it's a shame, but it's an image that I'm sure. Uh, a prolific artist would would um, mortalise it in in a, in a lovely piece of artwork, and I'd certainly encourage any uh, budding creative people out there to please have, please have a stab at doing so, just like Green Giant is. <laughs> right. Jesus. So we've got our first semi final. Yeah. Who will? JGG. Why is it? So is it, is it let down a bit? Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Big Boy versus Pepper Rami Animal. This sees MJ versus MJ. If, um, if Big Boy is made of metal, uh, uh, this is what I was not, wondering. Not only am I not sure that Pepper Rami Animal can defeat him, but I'm not sure that anyone can. Perhaps, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, maybe. I don't know. Uh, uh, certainly not the Pepper Rami Animal. I don't think the Pepper Rami, Palmer, Pepper Rami Animal has got any wile or trickery is just an absolute little beast he's a little scrapper um i think he's mad but i think big boy might be clumsy and i think i I do think it's just throw something in because i think this i think this will change the whole context of what we're talking about here why are we assuming big boy's made of metal is it just solely because he's you know usually represented as a statue yeah 
So I would disagree because if he is a character, I'm assuming he's not made of metal because the character of Big Boy is not a robot, is not an android. Right. So there, so therefore, he's just a big boy. He could be. He could be the love, jo- the love child of the Jolly Green Giant. For we know, I don't think that him being oh, metal sh- should play you, into this. You struck on something there. He's still a boy. He's still the a boy. Army animal is a fear-inducing creature. Yeah, oh, I, I, I almost feel like he, he, the boy would probably see the pepper army animal as a toy, and would, um, his, his, he, he's would let his guard slip, underestimate it. Because, particularly because yes. he hasn't been in a fight either, has he? Yeah, exactly. big boy. Almost, Could... almost as if, almost if his parents have just dropped him off at this tournament without telling him what he's <laughs> doing. Could this <laughs> could this be our second no show then? In the the, the in that big boy sees the pepper army animal is scared and just legs it because he's not he's not prepared for a fight. He's not a fighter. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's I mean this is essentially what's happened here is is child abuse. Um, yeah. How how old do we think big boy would be? I think big boy's about five or five. Yeah, okay. yeah. I think he's really five quite young. Three. Um, however, if Big Boy's parents are the kind of parents that would enter their child unknowingly in a deathmatch tournament, they're probably bad parents. Um, yeah. And have pr- he's probably been exposed to a level of violence, perhaps from watching his father play Call of Duty. Perhaps from his mother thinking, let's what. Let- let, let him watch Child's Play. It's called Child's Play. It must be suitable for children. He's probably been exposed to a level of violence that most five-year-olds haven't. Um, and is that going to make him more open to to reacting in a, in a for this, for the purposes of the tournament, a positive manner, which is with extreme and inappropriate violence? I think it might add to the emotional instability. Instability, oh, yeah, rather. Yeah, correct, yeah. I personally see this is how I see it playing out. I see, I see the big boy going into this. Maybe he comprehends what he's into. Maybe he doesn't. We don't know. Either way, he sees Pepper Army Animal. He doesn't see the fighter, even though he's crazy. Because he's, you know, big boy. Uh, big boy's, you know, not quite all there. He's not mentally developed yet, regardless of what his upbringing is. He doesn't see this as being a, a fighter. He just sees it as a snack. He just sees it as something to eat. He chows down on Pepper Army Animal. Oh, he's one, is he? No. Pepper Army Animal, much like the alien from the popular film Alien, <gasps> straight out his chest. John hurts oh, it. Oh, fuck. Oh, and that would John hurt. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I, Game I over. I feel like there's a moment where Big Boy looks like he's won, but I feel like Pepper Army Animal, with his almost indestructible nature. That's too cinematic to not well. happen. Oh, yeah. that is too Imagine cinematic. that. We've just... We've just seen a cartoon bunny fucked to death, oh, and then it's followed up by a five-year-old by child some... being yeah. bloody aliened. Oh, yeah. great Ridley Scott! Yeah, yeah. Game over. Yeah, I, think I that, hope I at think some point in these fights we're going to stop seeing cylindrical items being inserted into the position. <laughs> but I'm not sure if uh, looking at the next few matchups, I'm, mm, I reckon there might be some opportunities for more. Very much so. <laughs> I think the next um, yeah, one's my, my, almost inevitable. Yeah, my vote my vote goes to Pepper Army. Yeah, anymore. big time, yeah. Yeah, he's through, isn't he? Yeah, correct. Okie dokie 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 dokie. Right, Captain Morgan versus the unclest of men, Uncle Ben. Oh. So, you know, so, I mean, so many times during the Uncle Ben versus Pillsbury Doughboy was made mention of the fact that Uncle Ben had that one last fight in him. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this is one too many for Ben. He's, yeah, it it, it it could beat a soft boy, but when we're, we're not talking about a soft boy now, we're talking about <laughs> a hard man, a hard, very hard man. <laughs> and this is exactly how it's going down. Captain Morgan, grab no, there would be no insertions. Um, no. I think this would be. I think this would be worryingly quick. Gonna, yeah, I think it's going to be brutal. To I, th- be honest. I, think I think it could. It's going to be. It, it, do you know how? Do you know how quick I think it would be? Go on. I feel like Uncle Ben would would recognise the battle they had hit on him, and he would just lay down his weapons. Not yeah, that he would have them. But yeah, I, just I say I'm feel not... like there would be. It'd be just like a gentleman's thing. Like he'd be like, there'd be that, like you said, Morgan Freeman voice. He'd just be sort of make some sort of speech about how he came 
for one last battle. Yeah. And he's achieved what he needed to achieve. Yeah. That would be such a touchy moment. And I think then Captain Morgan absolutely fucking murders him. Big time. <laughs> Captain, <laughs> Captain Morgan Doesn't has it? just been through a 45-minute Broadway with the Kool-Aid man. Captain Morgan has Captain Morgan is starting this fight with more rage than he had in him at the start of the tournament. And it's going to be one of those horrible situations where... Captain Morgan punches Ben once and you see Ben you see the life drain out of Ben and he's he's gone before he even hits the ground. But before yeah. he hits the ground, Morgan's got another four or five headshots in on him as well and and we, we what we've seen is is he, I mean, this is even worse than the Jolly Green Giant and the Caramel Bunny. This is t- cause this is a t- this is a tearjerker. Like we're now starting. We've got a real heel here now. This is. I was going to yeah. say, is he our first heel of the tournament? I think that I think Captain Morgan has has just done a serious heel turn by by brutally murdering one of the biggest faces of the, in 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 this entire <laughs> thing. Um, and I, for one, can't wait to see. Um, can't wait to see what what will happen in the in this in the semis when when Captain Morgan has to go up against one of the big boys because, um, well, I'm harder than Jolly Green Giant was. Are we are we are we picturing are we picturing like Stuart come back to the wrestling thing? Are we picturing Morgan walks in and he says you know some sort of some sort of noble you know resignation to basically say he doesn't want to fight Ben Ben he extend, does that. Yeah, extend yeah. extends out the the hand. Captain Morgan looks at it, takes it, gives him the shake. Ben turns, <laughs> yeah, walk away, and he's still got he's still got the hand. Yeah, yeah, oh, amazing. Yeah. Pulls him back, rip tied, rip, rip, back. rip cord clothesline, bang, straight down. Yeah, yeah. Oh Jesus! And wait, I'm seeing him wailing on him. I, I it's bloody, yeah. and it's is. It, I, I feel very sad. I feel very sad for Uncle Ben, and I think I I hope he's revenged in a later. Uh, in a later tournament, but I think we've spoken a little bit about rage. At yeah. this point, for me, Captain Morgan, a man who enjoys uh, deliciously depth spiced rum, uh, this is a man who's now covered in the stench and the dampness of uh, artificial tasting watermelon, strawberry, and kiwi. He's absolutely. <laughs> so- no, no, no. He's soaked through. He's soaked through with Kool Aids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, it's just it's just going up his nostrils, and it's making him flare even more. Um, Captain Morgan is a man out for blood, and I think with this match, he gets a certain fill of blood. A lot of blood, a yeah. lot. I've, I've almost got this final image of him stood over Ben's limp body, holding him, holding him by the shirt, and he's like, he's just sort of like, he's just sort of a few, a couple of foot off the ground as he's holding him, and then just, just him letting go, and, him, and and poor Ben flopping to the ground. Yeah, basically, basically really clinging, don't... clinging to life. Yeah. Do you I don't think he's dead? Do you don't think Ben? I really do hope we've got some. Go on, mate. Do you think? Do you think Ben's dead or not? Because obviously we've killed. Uh, we'll we've... find out later, I guess. We've killed Big oh, Boy. We've killed the bunny. I, I feel like Kirsty Gallagher will be able to tell us later on in the tournament <laughs> what, what the prognosis is. But, yeah. Maybe we, yeah, we oh, might need to catch up on him. What a yeah. cunt. I please want to encourage any creative individuals. We we have we have uh, discussed some iconic scenes here. Uh, and I really <coughs> do hope some of this stuff is captured uh, on paper, digital or otherwise. Digital paper, of course. Um, right then, final final QF. Oh, we we have an absolute <laughs> belter. Reinforce the ring, lads. Yes. Reinforce the ring. Back? Oh, right. it's, it's Honey Monster. It's Tony the Tiger. It's cereal versus cereal again <laughs> in the Super Bowl. The atmosphere is palpable. The crowd are, are, are roaring. Uh, they're sweating. They've anticipated this fight, and now they're seeing what can only be described as a battle of titans. I, I, I don't. I don't know how to call it. I, I think I do not. I think the crowd are slightly in Honey Monster's favour, and I think that's because the crowd perceive him as being um, a nice guy underdog face. We've got basically face versus face here, haven't we? We've got, you know. Uh, we've got John Cena versus Roman Reigns. Yeah, but I think what you've under, under uh, you've missed there is one of these has a catchphrase, and we all know if you've got a catchphrase, you're over. 
Oh God, yeah. The chant, the signs. They've got signs. They're holding signs saying it's great. Tony is great. great. Tony's great. great. Tony's great. Has has Honey Monster ever have had a catchphrase? I don't know. I don't. I feel like he That's should have. He sweet. looks like a man that should have had a. Uh, like they disintegrate right. fucking fast. They it's disintegrate all about the honey mummy. Fuck. It's all about the honey mummy. Oh, I think we spoke a little that's, about that's... a little bit about the endurance of the Kool Aid Captain Morgan match. I think this is an equally long match. I think that this is oh. going to break down like, and it's going to end up in the car park and all sorts. Of this just just <laughs> trading <Ooh>. blows. <sighs> yeah, imagine. Yeah, they're oh. punching each yeah. other. They're wailing on each other one on one. They they smash through the the ropes on the ring. They're snapped. They're tangled. They're just punching, yeah. wailing on each other. They're moved out the door into the car park. The the crowd are following them, and we've now got ourselves a back alley brawl. Well, yeah, where's your heart? Where's your heart on this one? For me, it's Tony. Is that who yeah, you see... want? Is that who you want or who you think? Is that your heart or your head? Heart. I, I mean, I, I have to stick with Honey Monster. He's my, he's my one remaining combatant. He's he's a bloody lovely fella behind the scenes. Oh, I've coached, I've, I've coached him through this, and so much respect in the locker room, hasn't he, Honey Monster? Whereas Tony's got a little <laughs> bit of backstage heat, just because he, he's. Um... I feel like Tony's a bit of a loner. Well, do you remember there was that incident that was reported in the press a couple of weeks ago where Tony actually threw Uncle Ben off the tour bus and and since what happened with Uncle Ben and Captain Morgan, Tony's been getting a little bit of heat backstage for that. And of course, he wasn't to know what was going to happen with Ben. You know, realistically, we can't hold it against him, but there's a bit of me that does. And I feel bad about that. My heart says honey. My head says Tony. The thing is, we came into this tournament. Tony was a big pick for this. I think there's a lot of people that probably would have put their money on Tony. And I just wonder if that arrogance, that ego, just, you know, it, it's played it's played onto him a little bit too much. And he's a little bit too arrogant with it. I, I would feel... be foolish not to look at their physique. I know. I mean, they're both big lads, but Tony is... Um, I mean, Honey Monster is an... Is an is a monster, but Tony <laughs> is a Tony is a monster. He's stacked. I just, I don't want to say it. I don't want Tony to win, but I just think when it comes down to it, I think that it's big match Tony. How many times has Tony been in the main event? I, is you know that. For me, oh. he's got him in a chokehold. Do you think he's tapping? Do you think Honey Monster's tapping out though? I don't think. See, I don't. Here's the thing. I don't think Honey Monster's going to tap out. I don't. I think. I think oh, Tony's going. No. I think. I think Tony's going to literally make Honey Monster pass out because it does not matter yeah. that the, the Honey Monster is never going to tap. Honey Monster is never going to tap. Yeah. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't know the. No, uh, he doesn't know how to. Doesn't know the meaning literally, of something. He's a bit, he's a bit silly. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Dab bastard. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm sticking with my boy. I, I, I just think that I just think he's got just that little bit more strength. I mean, we're, we are obviously missing his, his, you know, his finishing maneuver, which is the the bear hug, which is almost inescapable. Yeah. But then Tony's got a big chest, and can Honey get his arms around? I don't think to... he can. I don't <sighs> think he can. I think he can. I think I think Tiger's. I, I, uh... I have. I, I will respect whatever happens here, but. My 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 man gets my respect, and I, it's it's honey monster for me. I'm afraid I I, I just can't see past Jeez. him. This I is think one of the... it was a it, it was a good match. It was one of the crowd's favourites, clearly, but uh, and it was a valiant effort from Honey Monster. He, like we've suggested, he is not tapping out. He's passing out, and yeah. for me, t- Tony gets it through choke. I don't. It's not the result I wanted, but sometimes these things don't go our way. I'll tell you this much, though. I think there's a lot of respect with, with each competitor within each other, and I think if we return with <coughs> tag teams, I'd be looking at these two to team. Oh, Jesus Christ. Can you imagine? Oh, I'd like to reference something that I've only just come across. Rocky, uh, and into Rocky 2 and Rocky 3. We eventually, spoilers, we eventually see Apollo Creed training Rocky. Yeah. It's oh. a similar situation. The, yeah. uh, what were once uh, respected 
um, uh, opponents of each other for sure. They become the, some of the strongest allies, but maybe that's a story for another I t- time. I tell you what, in the in the semi-finals, I feel sorry for Captain Morgan because I reckon Honey Monsters in Tony's uh, Tony's corner. Oh, the um, oh, come on, let's get there. Let's get yeah. there. Right, we got to the semi-finals. Yeah. Yes, I- Likes, comments, likes, follows. This isn't any ordinary social media. This is Food Review UK social media. Come find us at facebook.com forward slash Food Review UK. On Twitter at Food Review UK. And on Instagram at Footgram. Oh, and don't forget the main channel, Food Review UK on YouTube. To round out the semi finals, we have the. Uh, the, the... <laughs> <laughs> the rapist murderer, Jolly Green Giant, and versus <laughs> killer of small pepperon. children. <laughs> the infanticidic uh, pepperoni animal, um, and the other semi-final then is Captain Morgan versus Tony Anthony Fuck the Tiger. You know. <laughs> oh, this is lit, man! Oh, this is the best thing ever. Right, right. let's go. So, Jolly Green Giant, pepperoni animal. How do we see it? Fucking hell. I think this is the Jolly Green Giant's first real test. Oh, yeah. Um, Pepper Army Animal, we see him eating a lot. Uh, I Jolly Green Giant is big, but honestly, I see him made up of vegetation. Um, I think that's apparent. I think he's going to be... Get, I think there's going to be more, some, more than nibbles. I think there's going to be chunks eating here. You think that Pepper Army Animal is just going to literally take chunks out of JGG. I think he's going to be. I think that might even be his game plan. Chunk, chunk, chunk. Bite him down. Wear him out. Crawling all around his body. Jolly Green Giant's doing all this. He loses a finger there. He loses a testicle there. Uh, <laughs> I, no, genuinely, I don't think there's any area that Pepper Army Animal wouldn't have a little suck. Or bite, even. Bite. Right. <laughs> Two things here. One, meat is better than veg. So that's classic. Got a, got a bit, Pepper Army Animals got a win for that. Um, now we we said no team ups, but how do we feel about an almost Fantasia esque element of Pepper Army, whereby he sort of can almost clone himself as he gets chopped down? He bec- you know he becomes like a worm. Two of the, kind of yeah. Like I've always I've always thought that all the Pepper Armies that you see in the adverts are like the same Pepper Army, but somehow you know it's just sort of like chopped in half and then they sort of grow the other half. And I think that's how they make Pepper Armies. Exactly, <laughs> through worms. Wide um, boy becomes standard, standard becomes mini. Interesting. Yeah, so I almost see this 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 scenario of the Jolly Green Giant hacking away, trying to like we we've all seen Gulliver's Travels. I almost see this element of Jolly Green oh. Giant laying on laying on the ground and like sweeping away the Pepper oh. Army and, and what happening is he gets into two pepper, smaller Pepper Armies and they come running at him and then he swipes away and he's got four Pepper Armies but smaller coming at him. And I just think eventually it's just going to... You know, he's a big lad. He's, you know, he's eased past Captain Crunch, I think, fairly, yeah. Yeah, fairly yeah. easily. Um, Energy-wise, he's a little bit spent from the bunny. You know, he's, yeah. he's yeah. got that post-coital, you know, lull. <coughs> um, I just I just think the Pepper Army is just going to be just overwhelming. Yeah, I think it's too quick and too dangerous for him. So the Jolly Green Giant smokes after sex. <laughs> what does he smoke? An entire tree. Depends how depends how fast he was thrusted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering if he's a smoker. Is it gonna have that's gonna have an impact on his kind of cardio and yeah. I see him as a steamer rather than a smoker. Like a va- like a vapour. Like he's <laughs> Yeah, maybe something like that. He steam he steams his uh his tobacco. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean it is weird that we, this is I mean we've not even covered it I guess, but he it is definitely the biggest versus the smallest here, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um It is David versus Goliath and what happened in that belt? David won. Yeah, little lad won it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't Although, I don't see Pepper Army running out of energy, but I think maybe Jolly Green Giant is spent. Now that you've said it's David versus Goliath, I'm not sure I'm prepared to let someone called David win. <laughs> very true, very mm. true. Gosferences. Well, Gosferences. Mm. 
in theory, I mean, you look at the two, you, you naturally lean towards the Green Giant, but mm. knowing everything he's been through, I, I just think the Pepper Army animal, he's just a psychopath. I don't think he's got any energy yeah. problems. You know that a Pepper Army, 100, gra- 100 grams of Pepper Army is made from 151 grams of pork. That's, that's yeah. I mean, that's magic. That's a lot of... Yeah. That's a lot it's of... It's like a hunt. We've is seen it on the review I did it. The ingredients literally some, say something like 128%. Yeah. And I was like... What he's got extra, really? honey. He's got he's got extra in the tank. That is that is exactly what that is. That's extra in the tank. Jolly Green yeah. Giant, yeah. Jolly Green Giant is set is spent both both violently and sexually. Whereas the pepperoni <laughs> animal has literally got some more in the tank, twenty eight percent more. The, yeah, pepperoni animal's just bitten his way into the final. I reckon. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. he's he's destroyed a racist. He's murdered a child. And he's overwhelmed a giant pepper army wow. animal. Welcome to the final. I did not what see that happening. I didn't. No, that's a tough. You look at that top top. Um, well, you look at that top half, and I sort of think there's a, there's one or two dangerous combatants. Combatants, even not combatants. Um, I think the bottom half is a stronger, yeah. stronger yeah. half. Oh, that bottom um, half of the bracket is a killer. But yeah, I think most people looking at that would have gone, "Oh, Green Giant will sweep his way to yeah. the final without even a you know." A breath. Yeah. Right. Second sem- semi final. Second of the, the penultimate battle of this evening, gentlemen. What a different match this is to the previous match in the bottom half of the bracket. There is no kind of just trading of blows, mutual respect. This is going to be unpleasant. Yeah. yeah. Oh. This is going to get dirty. We, and we have just heard from Kirsty Gallagher that. that Ben is still clinging to his life and it is looking good. It is looking good that he may come through, but it's still inconclusive. Um, so it's what's what's to, Tony's wearing a Tony's wearing a t shirt. It says it says pray for Ben. To, who's oh, that behind him? Pop. Who's that behind? He's followed to the ring by Honey Monster who's also wearing a Pray for Ben <laughs> t shirt. Oh, Honey Monster and Tony the Tiger are doing it for Uncle Ben. Oh Holy shit. Where are the captains? Nowhere to be seen. This just got personal. The crowds of the crowds have started holding up their lighters. Oh, ben, fuck ben, me. ben, 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 Justice oh. for Ben. Justice for Ben. <laughs> so yeah, Captain Morgan, Tony the Tiger. How do we see cover it? him in rice and put him in the air and cover? <laughs> I don't know. I just don't I know. Think, I, I think it's right, a game of let's, intelligence. Let's go, let's go pros and cons. What, what have they got? What have they got? Right, Tony. Tony has got size and speed, and uh, size, speed, strength. Morgs has got aggression, tactics. tactics, fighting skills. He's also quick and he's also strong. But not in the same and, level as Tony. Yeah, he, he's ruthless as well. God, he's, he'll yeah. do. He'll Dirty do what tactics. needs to be done. Dirty um, tactics. There's no, like, I mean, he's going to do all sorts when the ref's back's turned. He's, he's also got a sick fucking cape. Oh, what an av- he just He looks mint, doesn't he? Right. Uh, if I'm it was just on... His fists are covered in blood as well. Oh, big time. Blood and Kool-Aid. He's, he is... Look at what he's wearing compared to what Tony's wearing. When Once Tony takes off his Save Ben, Pray for Ben t-shirt, he's just got that <laughs> neckerchief on. <laughs> I can't, I can't stand behind a man wearing a neckerchief or a tiger, we- <laughs> or a tiger wearing a neckerchief for that matter. Oh, I just, I don't know. I, just, I think that if there's an opportunity for Captain Morgan to do something underhand here, and I think he will. I can see, I can see Captain Morgan pulling out, pulling out a couple of Tony's whiskers, and. That's going to smart. That's like, he's just going to do unpleasant things to Tony. And Tony's going to be swinging at him. I think that they're both in a situation where they're both equally tired. They both had, like, um, really, long really injury. long matches. But Captain Morgan had his had his endurance match against Kool-Aid Man. Tony's, yeah, Tony's had his against Honey Monster. He's just coming out of it. He's got the added added kind of moral support of Honey Monster but Honey Monster's not getting involved no matter what happens 
You know, no, he's, he's too honourable. Yeah, he's too honourable for that. And I think that that's Tony. For me, that's Tony's downfall. Tony's honourable nature is his downfall. That for me, no surprises. I've got to back my boy Morgs. Um, yeah, I I feel that this is classic, classic WWE t- storytelling here. What we're gonna see is we're gonna see Captain Morgan take an early. Take an early sort of lead. Take an early uh, initiative in this fight. He's going to be he's going to be pounding on on uh, Tony. Oh, Tony's tired. We said this, and he's just, every now and again he's going to be you know distracting the referee. Honey Monster's not going to get involved, but Honey Monster's going to you know be calling to the referee and saying you know look he's cheating. He's he's doing this that and the other, and the referee's going to be like so concerned <coughs> with keeping Honey Monster out of the game. Yeah, that. Captain Morgan will just capitalise on that and just be taking chunks out of Tony left, right, and centre. Tony will put up a little bit of fight, and it looks like he's got a bit of second win. And he's gonna, you know, he's he's pulling out some of his big guns. He's got the claws out, but then just out of nowhere, Captain Morgan absolutely just sucker punches him, and he just takes him for the he's takes gonna, him for the win. There's there's no chance whatsoever that at some point in this match, Captain Morgan is not going to punch Tony as hard as he can in the cock. That is happening. <laughs> I think that's true, but I th- I would argue that Tony can take it. Tony is mm-hmm. a big old guy. I see him. I see him getting a beating, a heavy beating, a brutal beating, and maybe an unfair beating. But I see Tony as a man with a, a rather a beast with a lot of willpower, um, a very physically strong ability, endurance, and I think he can take that beating. I think where he counterattacks, that's where he can get them all. <laughs> By comparison, Morgs is a is a much smaller person. Uh, Tony is a statuous man, and I think Tony might be going for the knockout. You reckon he can just literally one bomb Morgs? I think that you're right that Tony the Tiger's willpower is is Tony's big thing here. That he's going to keep coming back. He's, there's a never say die attitude. He's got purple on his defensive um, defensive. What's the word, Michael? His defensive attribute. Purple on his the second hero clicks reference. Willpower. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, um, he can he can go he can perform actions two turns without without without, without taking, without taking pushing damage. damage. Yeah, um, for any hero any hero clicks fans in the house, but um, <laughs> I I do think that it doesn't matter what his willpower is. I think I think that sadly I think Honey Monster might end up being the the decider in Captain Morgan's favour. I think that Honey Monster is going to prove to be a distraction on the outside of the yeah. ring and it's going to end up going in Captain Morgan's favour. Um, and I think it will it will come down to perhaps perhaps Captain Morgan takes the neckerchief and does just choke um, Tony the yeah. Tiger. He, or, or even Captain Morgan's got that leather kind of belt, hasn't he? Maybe he takes that and, and chokes out the Tiger and while the referee's back's turned... I think I think this is a thing. I think yes, Tony has a lot more when it comes to the attack. But here's what I think. I think Captain Morgan has had his endurance fight, but it was in the first round. It's two rounds ago. He had a relatively easy quarter final because yeah. all he had to do was beat up Ben. Yeah. Um also his endurance fight was less about taking hits and just powering well not powering yeah. through, but but beating finding cool ways, man, yeah. To beat cool over Ben. Whereas Tony not only was, you know, Taking chunks out of out of uh, Honey Monster, he was taking, you know, punches back. So he's injured. You yeah. know, he's 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 taken a little bit of a, a knock in the last round. I just think the I think the tactical nous, the ruthlessness, the sheer willingness to 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 strangle his opponent, I think, just leads to Captain Morgan just just squeaking this at the end. I, I think Tony puts up an, a tremendous fight. Mm. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what he does somewhere down the line. But I, th- I think Captain Morgan is uh, unfortunately just gonna, he's just gonna be the, the villain. We ne- we need a villain in the final, and I think Captain Morgan's gonna be that man. Yeah, well, I I do worry. I mean, we were we were teasing the uh, the tag team of uh, of Tony and Honey Monster, and I wonder that further down the line, could the fact that Honey Monsters had such a negative impact on Tony's performance in the tournament could that that could could actually impact on their uh, ability to function as a coherent tag team a cohesive tag team in the future as well well um we'll, we'll find out more when they're interviewed on the yeah. barbershop next week <laughs> when, to- when the honey monster super kicks tony the tiger through the window brilliant 
So, there I we go. I think Tony's put in one of the most impressive performances oh. we've seen in the tournament. Oh. Oh. Do you know what? And, uh, he, he I, I still out. back him, but it looks like the final's decided. Yeah, he, he limps out to absolute cheers from the fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like he, he gets to the end of the ramp. Honey Monster's holding up his arm, you know, as a sign of respect for, for Tony. You know, it's... it's it, Whoever the winner is of this tournament, uh, Tony has has taken the uh, taken the fans' hearts. Yeah. In order to grow the Food Review UK podcast, we'd like to ask all our listeners and subscribers to drop us a review on their chosen podcast application. With your help, we can grow the podcast to such an extent that we have no need for the Food Review UK YouTube channel and its owner, Michael Jameson. There is a little favour that we'd like to ask of you. Just head on over to iTunes and leave us a positive review. 1,000 five-star reviews and MJ dies! Hurrah! So, final. We've got good money for this, boys, I reckon. Jesus, yeah. Yeah. Pepperami Animal versus Captain Morgan. I, think anyone, I don't think anyone saw this as the final. I think the smart money at the beginning would have been top and bottom of the top and bottom of the card. Giant, yeah. giant Tony, Tony the Tiger versus Jolly Green Giant. I think anyone's money would have been on that as a final, looking at the bracket. Um, yeah. But you've got to. I think what you've got to do is you've got to say that the the ingenuity, the the unexpected brutal heel turn of Captain Morgan obviously was was the was the big turning point for him. Um, yeah. Because we didn't see it in the Kool Aid match, but then in it, the, the way he the way he switched in Ben and Pepper Army Animal has just been consistently brutal Psychotic. <laughs> and will, willing to do what was necessary. You know, we we said that Ben Ben was a man who's who's done what needed to be done in the past, and we can see that in his eyes. We don't need to look into Pepperami 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 Animal's eyes. We can just look back at the tapes from the from the previous rounds. He's done what needed to be done to get the job done, and he deserves to be in this final. He's a small he's a small sausage, but in my right. eyes, in my eyes, he's, he's the big giant hero. Yeah, correct. I think we've got ourselves an incredibly dirty, oh, vicious, filth. and bloody final. Yeah. I think this is going to nope, come down to the wire. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. This is a cage match. Yeah. Oh, let's, in- oh, let's, let's encase them in steel. Yeah, it's happening. It's hell in now, the cell. Is, for the sake yeah, of the audience, gonna... if, not, if nothing else. Yeah, I was going to say it's. It, let's make it hell in the cell because if it's a cage match, then then Pepperami's just slipping between the cage bars and he's just <laughs> jumping down to the bottom, easy, easy peasy. Um, <laughs> hell in the cell. These guys are going to the top. This is this is this is violence. There's violence in it. Yeah. This this is this is blood. This is guts. This is sweat. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> so ding, do ding, ding. I do not know where this goes, boys. I'm right. seeing some sparring. At start. The, they're walking around the ring. They don't know. You know, they've they've both studied the previous matches. Uh, they know the danger, the threat level that their opponent mm. faces, and they're sort of just circling each other. Maybe just going in for the odd swipe. It's not even a punch at this point. It's a swipe. The claws are out in this match. They may not have claws, but the metaphorical claws are out with these guys. Uh, they're maybe spitting on each other. They're oh. sweating. The, the vicious uh, Captain Morgan's clothing is is ripped. Uh, Pepper Army Animal's probably got a slice for him. Um, oh, I don't know who's landing the first real hit of this one, guys. Yeah, I mean Pe- 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 Pepper Army's making the first move in this fight. So, so, yeah, we've 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 made reference to it. Captain Morgan is a smart man. He knows he's been in two big slobber knockers he's had to fight his way past the cooler man he's had to fight his way past tony he's had to use his nous his guile he knows that his energy is 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 waning somewhat whereas he knows pebrami he's almost boundless energy so he's waiting for pebrami to make the first mistake and he's just dancing around the room as soon as pebrami makes a little jab for him he's out he's 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 out of the way he's just letting pebrami just use up some more of that energy I reckon Captain Morgan's got a bit of a problem here, actually. I reckon Captain Morgan's been foreshadowed by hundreds of years of uh, pirate mythology 
Uh, we've seen him. He's had some tremendously long battles. He's had some longer battles than Pepper Army. Pepper Army's got all that energy still. I think Pepper Army's just been his hand off. I reckon he well, it may not have been a quick thing, but he somehow got the job done finger by finger. Pepper Army animals taking a hand. Mm. What his own hand or? Uh... Captain Morgan. Bitten off the hand of Captain Morgan. Oh, so uh, oh, I get what you're saying. So a, a Sans Hook pirate. Ah, interesting. This it, might be the origin story for a significant injury for Morgan. I th- I think that what Morgan will have what, what Morgan's biggest problem is is he's watched he's watched he's seen Pepper Army Animal. He knows that he can't beat him by eating him because look what that look how what happened to big boy he knows that he can't beat him by breaking him in two because look what eventually happened to jolly green giant captain morgan has got to find an ingenious way of defeating the pepper animal pepper army animal if anyone can captain morgan can do that unfortunately for captain morgan my imagination is not at the same level as his and I can't think of I can't think of the way that Captain Morgan can actually defeat Pepper Army Animal that we haven't already kiboshed in previous rounds. Um, uh oh, I, I think I, I think, think there'd be I a think... chance that he try to wrap him and roll him, but I yeah. think <coughs> Pepper Army Animal would find a way out. Yeah, I think he's 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 looking he's looking at his cape and thinking, can I fashion something akin to the uh, the the plastic wrapper that encases the Pepper mm. Army? Um, and I think Shout. that's going to that's gonna be his tactic. But I, you know what? That cape ain't made of plastic, sunshine. If Pepper Army Animal can fight his way out of a small boy, he can fight his way out of a cape. Exactly. Captain I Morgan's think... doing the gentlemanly thing, and he's trying to play a game of wrap the sausage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we all know how that turned out for the caramel bunny. <laughs> yeah, I, I think there's I think there's gonna be a moment in this fight where Captain Morgan has a face of realisation that he just he he's can't beat know him, he do. doesn't know what to he, do. He I think, cannot do anything. With desperate... And then he realises shit, I'm stuck inside a cage with him. Jesus. And I've only got one hand and Fucking Pepper hell, he's... looking at my leg now. Is Captain Morgan bottling it. I don't think Quite no like he did with the rum. The, oh, well done. <laughs> oh, That's the that. only thing Captain Morgan's ever bottled. There's no way Captain Morgan's giving up. And he's got nowhere to go. He's inside a, a, a steel cage. He's inside a, a cell. Has he got any way of impaling the Pepper Army animal and therefore incapacitating it? So if he had his sword, for example, which he hasn't, but if he had, he could impale the animal and the animal would be unable to, to in, unable to move. He hasn't chopped it in half. It hasn't become two. He's impaled it. Can Captain Morgan impale the Pepper Army animal? I think he's right. I think so. He's lost his left hand. I think Captain Morgan is is now in dire straits. He's he's he's, he's, he's had other bites out of him as well. And no, let's not let's let's be fair. He's getting his fair share of hits in. This is not a one sided match still. Oh no. Um, but he's looking battered, bruised, and bloody by this point. I think he takes his one remaining good arm. Uh, his hand, and he rips off the 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 silver sterling buckle from his chest belt, mm. releasing his his cape, and he's now got the needle thread, the sort of the the thread portion of yeah. the belt. He's yeah. flipped it up using his one good hand, and he's now got he's put what it. is essentially a shank. Yeah, he's holding and the he's buckle in his hand, and he's got the thing sticking out That's between it. his knuckles. He's, and he's stabbing, he's jabbing, and he's getting his hits in. He's getting his hits in. We're now looking at a uh, an edamified pepper army animal. Uh, this this guy's got more holes than well, I, I you know I sort of hate to use the terminology, but uh, terminology, but uh, more holes than a Cadbury bunny. <laughs> <laughs> Famously got one very giant hole now. Um, is that enough to keep off the Pepper Army? I don't think it is. I don't think. I think that's all he's got. I think Michael's seen what I saw. That's all he's got that he can use to try and impale the Pepper Army. I think the problem with the Pepper Army is it's such a greasy, slimy little thing, isn't it? <laughs> I think... And also, he's very thin. It's all well mm. and good to say he's got that to stab him with. There's not a lot. To, there's not a lot to aim for. No. I think uh, Captain Morgan may be a trained fighter, but I think Pepper Army Animal was a born fighter. Oh, Michael. Michael. 
that what my oh Mike, are you in the podcast? What an incredible, incredible line! And I, I, I make you right, and it hurts because particularly because I lost my entire team bar Morgs in the first round, and we've taken Morgs to the final. And it, I. Yeah. The way I see this rounding out, I see Pepper Army Animal is now a... Uh, he's hungry for battle, and he appreciates the battle that Captain Morgan's given him. Whilst uh, Pepper, Army, Pepper Army Animal might have uh, performed some murders in his previous matches, I think he's hopping up, jumping onto Captain's Mor- Captain Morgan's head, probably grabbing onto his uh, moustache. There's, there's a lot of hair there to grab onto. And he's repeatedly headbutting Captain Morgan in the nose. He's breaking in his nose. Captain Morgan is pouring with blood. And he, he knocks him down. Captain Morgan drops to his feet. And he jumps off and he leaves the fight there. Yeah. We think that Pepper Army Animal just accepts the win. Captain Morgan can no longer fight. Um, he's 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 covered in blood. He's 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 he can't see even you know the 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 broken nose, the the blood. Captain Morgan's unable to continue, and Pepper Army Animal is is respecting game. Game respects game. He sees yeah. he sees a, a kindred spirit. He sees yet another fighter who was capable of great things. Um, and like a Viking and, warrior says, "I'll see you in Valhalla, my friend," and and leaves it for the day. You could yeah. even suggest that maybe one of those jabs that Captain Morgan got in was on one of Pepper Army's eyes. Uh, you've got Captain Morgan with a missing hand. You've got Pepper oh. Army animal with a missing eye. Oh. And I think with that one remaining eye, Pepper Army is. Pepperoni animal is casting his eye over to the sidelines and he's seeing Honey Monster and Tony the Tiger sitting next to each other oh. and he's thinking I, I fucking like this Morgan kid can you I imagine like him a lot Jesus Christ Pepperoni animal and Captain Morgan versus Tony the Tiger and Honey Monster I mean that's, oh. my, that's my main yeah. event like, next year isn't it Jesus Christ can we just do this as a can we just Sack off talking Paper about you. food and just do, just just make podcasts about food, having fights all the time. I'm game. Um, I I I I feel that Michael's painted probably the, the best picture I've yeah. seen. I, 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 I'm just not prepared to 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 argue with that level of creativity. Um, yeah. If there's so, one one thing that 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 one thing that Michael Jameson does better than any other man on the planet, it's to uh, to take it where no one else would, um, and 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 I can't see anywhere else where that could go. Well so, done. We have it. We have our champion. We have our winner. Our our very first royal crumble winner. For Pepper I'm surprised. Michael. I think we all knew he was dangerous, but I'm not sure if I ever saw him as winning. Um, no, as no, winning the whole, the whole no. tournament. No, for me, I for me, I thought at best he was um he was a mid card bad guy, you know he was someone who um who your younger fighters would kind of have to prove themselves against as they as they rose up the card towards the main event. He wasn't for me. I think that what that that what this has proven here is that that sometimes attitude, desire to win, and a and a killer instinct can can take a, a wily veteran back to the top. Um, and, and the funny thing is, I don't think he even knows he was in a tournament. He <laughs> no. just it, he was just put in front of people, and he just did what he what came to him. Yeah, he just he just saw something, and he thought, "I'm going to fucking kill that." He's not a trained and fighter. He's a born fighter. He's a born fighter. Oh. And that's his t-shirt. Well, wow. well done, Michael. What? <laughs> Make that t-shirt. Make that t-shirt. <laughs> Sell that t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Brilliant. Well done, boys. That was a absolutely a st- the crowd absolutely loved the event. Oh, they were hot all all the way through the night, weren't they? I mean, for me, the crowd that um, that Honey Monster Tony the Tiger match, um, yeah, and the and then the following Captain Morgan versus Tony the Tiger match, the crowd were. I think in the final, if anything, I think the crowd. Um, the the sheer level of violence and the intensity of it, the crowd were very very quiet and they just and they were more just kind of watching it, uh, possibly because they'd been spent by the um, by the semi final and the quarter final that preceded it. But um, 
they got the I think they got the money's worth definitely. T shirt. I mean, I mean, you, you look at it. We've got a surprise winner. We've got an MVP, and I think I think Tony's got to be the MVP of the of the tournament. Yeah, big he's, time. He's, he's had two yeah. two think, smashing fights. I think there were more Tony T shirts sold on the merch stands. That's the report I'm getting in anyway. So yeah, I would imagine so. Pray, pray for Ben T shirts. Yeah, a lot of returns of the Captain Morgan <laughs> T-shirts. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. The, uh, the, uh, the the truck containing the uh, Chip the Wolf <laughs> merchandise is currently just being reloaded back up. And uh, <coughs> someone did accidentally buy one, but uh, they they returned it. <laughs> Coming soon to a pound shop near you. Brilliant. <laughs> well done, boys. That was uh, that was great fun. That was great fun. Um. What say we put this out to vote in the front group as well? We'll put through the uh, we'll put through the last sixteen yeah. group rounds, see who wins, and we'll just see what the fans say and, and see who they would have crowned as their likely mm-hmm. uh, as their winner. Um, or, so we'll, fan so, pick, if you will. Yeah. This is the official. Yeah, this is what yeah. actually happened. We weren't making this up. We were commentating on actual yeah. events tonight. Yeah, precisely. Absolutely. Um, whether you can you can tell us what you thought of our uh, our little podcast and whether you agree that Pepper Army Animal should win or not. Um, you boys got anything else? Nope. I'd like to thank all of the all of the athletes for their hard work. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to take a moment as they do in the Oscars to to just spare a minute for our fallen fallen uh, athletes who, who have we lost. Cadbury Caramel Bunny died. Big Boy died. Uh, Tango Flutters MIA. Yeah. Uncle uh, still hanging on. Yeah, we only lost two, didn't we? Yeah. Uncle uh, Ben may two. Be, bro, we don't know yet. Yeah. I was hoping for more deaths, if I'm honest. Well, you know, I mean, a man lost his hand and another sausage lost his eye. Yeah, yeah. And then man is in intensive care. <laughs> um, so, I think we've had enough violence for tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Um, thank you all for listening. Um, that was that was good fun. Something different for us to do. I, I imagine at the very least we'll do this again at some point next year. Uh, I don't know how we'll keep this fresh, but I'm sure we'll find a way. And uh, yeah, let us know wherever you find us on social media uh, what you thought of this. And uh, if you haven't already joined in the Fruck Unwrapped and Fans group, please do so. As I say, I will be putting these uh, fights in there as votes to see who you, the listeners think would win each of these bouts and crown your own your very own unofficial champion but for now pepper army is doing laps of the arena with his very small tiny little belt um, <laughs> <laughs> it, although it's not a belt is it is it straight it's not a belt it's uh it's, it's a, cha- a champion. championship yeah don't call it a belt you use a belt to hold up your pants nathan yeah absolutely that's twitter bounce for you um yeah thanks for all for listening and uh we will be back in a couple of weeks time with uh Somebody. Bye. I agree. Bye. Bye.